Some preparation and excitement underway this morning, downtown Fargo. Uh, Valley News team Steve Poitras is there, and he's showing us what's happening. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Mick. It's every boy's dream, of course, to be down here in a firefighting uh, uh, place like the Fargo Fire Department. We're with Josh Charles, young firefighter. Josh, uh, good morning to you. Good morning. And uh, we're going to be talking about things down here, but one of the first thing, uh, uh, items on uh, the agenda was to promote uh, the fire department's uh, involvement in uh, tomorrow's big parade. Yep, tomorrow's the St. Patrick's Day Parade for the city of Fargo. It starts at 1 o'clock in downtown Broadway. We're going to go from 425 Broadway down to Main Avenue. And for the first time in the history of the fire department and the parade, we're going to be leading it right behind the color guard. So we're really excited about that. And uh, it's yet to be determined there might be a whole lot of your fellow firefighters from other communities showing up as well. Yes, we invited 50 departments from around the region to come and show up. I know West Fargo for sure is coming. We've invited Moorhead and numerous other departments. So if you want to show up, just you know, feel free to come down and, and walk along with us through the parade. Well, there's so many uh, different uh, curious uh, things I I'd like to talk to you about the fire department. First of all, I understand there's uh, close to 100 firefighters on the crew here? Yeah, we have 95 firefighters in suppression. That means that they're actually on shift and they're the ones putting the fires out. Then we have chiefs and assistant chiefs who aren't so much in the suppression. So uh, right now, as we're talking, now we've talked with you and a couple of your mates are out here and they've been working on the truck and all. How many are upstairs, uh, I suppose, sleeping? Uh, they're still sleeping. They're kind of rolling out of bed now. I think we've got four more upstairs and we've got about 26 more across the city that are protecting everyone as they sleep. And now, did you say you were on 24-hour shifts? Yeah, we're going to get off here at 7.30 in the morning, then we're off for 24, and then we come back on for 24 hours again. Okay, and um, uh, what's the goal here? We're standing in front of one of the big trucks, and you tell me if it, if it came to replacing this, it would cost how much to replace this truck with all of its gear? A new ladder truck like this is running probably about three-quarters of a million dollars. Wow, and the goal is, if a call comes in, how soon is the truck going to be rolling out? We have one minute as our, as our target goal, so if the guys are in bed sleeping right now and they've got to get down here, they have one minute to be in their truck and have the truck moving out the door is our target goal. I see we got, uh, it's really an impressive uh, array of gauges and valves here and so forth. You want to just talk about this briefly, what's uh, going on here? Yeah, this is the driver's, you know, not only is he supposed to get us to the fire safely and uh, promptly, once we get there, it's his job to pump the water to the hoses and all the guys in the fire. So it's, a, it's an important job. He doesn't necessarily go in the fire, but he's the one helping put the fire out with water. No, I was talking with uh, Eric Eisenlohr earlier, and you got a couple of uh, additional where you can hook up uh, uh, water hoses here, but there's also, you call them pre-connects up here? Yeah, we got 200 feet of hose up here. This is called a pre-connect. This is what we grab if we're going to go into a fire. It has a nozzle and everything on it, and pre-connect means it's already hooked up to the truck. So we take that into the fire. If we need more hoses, that's when we start hooking up to other discharges on the truck. And uh, the, the uh, truck, you, there's like, uh, you were telling me there's a hydrant in Fargo about every 300 feet. Every 300 feet, and we flush those every spring. You see us out doing that. But to get water on initially, there's a, a, a certain amount of reservoir water on the truck. Yep, this truck, I believe, carries 300 gallons, and then most of the new engines carry 1,000 gallons of water. All right. Well, we've got a lot of things to talk about. This is Josh Charles of the Fargo uh, Fire Department, and we'll be back uh, with another couple of visits later on the Valley Today. For the Valley Today, I'm Steve Poitras. Thank you, Steve. All right. Hey, moms, get the little boy up because uh, Steve will be back about 6.05. I but... know. My little guy went on a field trip about two years ago and he was three and he still talks about it. Oh, the being at the fire man. fire what? department, putting on the overalls and the boots. And... Life-changing experience it for is. a boy. Pretty yeah. neat. Yeah. Heroes for sure. Well, coming up a little late. Poitras has got him to work in downtown Fargo. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Mick. Yes, Wade and I are excited to be down here at the uh, downtown Fargo Fire Station. We're with Josh Charles, young firefighter out of Plymouth, Minnesota, originally, right? Yes, sir. Three years here on the staff. You say you're coming up on your anniversary? Today is my three-year anniversary. All right, congratulations. Thanks. Now, we've talked some about the big truck here, but this uh, obviously must be when there's a uh, need for a rescue in the Red River. Yep, the city's got numerous uh, rescue boats around. We have three of them that are right alongside the river. we got two like this, a couple fishing boats, and a couple older gray Zodiacs. We use them on river rescues both in the winter and the summertime. About how long from uh, you get a call, you need to get to the river before this could be down and in the river? If we're in station, all the fire engines are equipped to tow this, uh, the boats. So we just hook up to them and run them right to the, via the river, and we have set spots where we can drop them into the river and be in there in a few minutes. We want to promote the fact that you're encouraging everybody to come down. The Fargo Fire Department is going to be taking part in the St. Paddy's Day Parade tomorrow? Tomorrow at 1 o'clock, St. Patrick's Day Parade, downtown Fargo. We're going to be leading it right behind the color guards. We're real excited about that. Okay, I got to understand some dignitaries might be up in front on the top. This is Ron Gugisberg. Uh, you're a more veteran here. Eight years now on the staff? Eight years in May, yep. Okay, what, uh, some uh, big fires over that time? Yeah, I've had a few big fires in, in the eight years. 
What's, uh, I would imagine physical fitness is always a primary concern for firefighters. Yeah, if you come here after hours, we're usually working out. Um, we also have to take a agility test every year to be sure that we're fit for the job. And you're out of New Ulm, Minnesota, right? Yep, southern Minnesota. Right. Ron Gugisberg, and finally, uh, they're tall, and then they're even taller. This is uh, Eric Eisenlohr, who, uh, you're out of St. Cloud. St. Cloud, Minnesota. And it's six years for you now on the staff here? Yep, that's about right. And uh, you're telling me uh, you, you, your wife's from Duluth, you're from St. Cloud, but you, you like Fargo just fine, huh? I do. I, I, uh, I'm happy raising my family here. It's a nice city. Okay, this truck, to get back to it, now we see this big ladder. That, uh, uh, like, how many floors can that go up? Um, typically, probably about nine. Um, not to say that we can't respond to fires over nine floors, because we do have uh, buildings in the city that are taller, but uh, typically this, this will go reach about nine stories, maybe a little less, depending on how far the truck is away from the building. But what sort of training do you, you and your fellow firefighters have to go through before you're qualified? Well, um, everybody here has a different level of training. Um, I, I personally went to college for two years for fire technology in Duluth, Minnesota, and, uh, but uh, typically... We run every new firefighter through three weeks of eight-hour days, um, and we train them the way we want them, but uh, everybody has to have some college experience to work All right. Here. Eric Eisenlohr, it's fun talking to the guys down here and with the, uh, all of the uh, equipment and the trucks and so forth. We'll be back one more time to visit with uh, some of the crew down here at the Fargo Fire Department. For the Valley Today, I'm Steve Poitras. Thank you very much, Steve. You know, for the next fundraiser down there, Michelle has a suggestion. should be the Fargo Firefighter Calendar. <laughs> I know. Do you have to be good looking to be a firefighter, Steve? Uh, I, you know, I, uh, <laughs> apparently so. <laughs> and they're all pretty handsome dudes. They can dudes. make some money. Yeah. That's good a good idea. idea. Then we could have a Channel 11 Valley, Valley News Live calendar. It, it, certainly. Someday. <laughs> Steve will be on March. Showing the guns. Yeah. Valley News Team Steve Poitras joins us live now from downtown Fargo with the latest. Morning, Steve. Good morning, Mick. Yes, uh, they got a big event that the uh, Fargo firefighters are going to be taking in tomorrow, and that's the St. Patrick's Day Parade. We're going to be talking more about gear here, but first uh, with Josh Charles. Uh, uh, we're standing in front of, uh, is this the, the main rig down here, I guess? Yeah, this is uh, Ladder 821, and this is what Dennis Wallacher and Commissioner yeah. Brad Wimmer are going to be riding in tomorrow. The idea is, and I don't know if they know it yet, we're going to have them up in the bucket waving at the crowd. So tomorrow, 1 o'clock, is the St. Patrick's Day Parade, and we hope everyone comes out and supports the fire department and the parade. Okay, that's, and there uh, might be firefighters from lots of places. We want to call in Eric Eisenlohr now, who is going to at least briefly run us through all of the gear for protection, for safety that the typical firefighter wears when he's going out to fight a fire. So go ahead, lead us through this, Eric. Okay. Uh, this is a uh, typical firefighter helmet. Uh, just, of course, protects our heads from the, the heat and uh, if anything falls on you. Uh, this is our SCBA, uh, self-contained breathing apparatus. We all have to wear these air packs into a fire uh, to, uh, of course, so we can breathe air and also it keeps the smoke out of our eyes and, and mouths. This is a uh, typical firefighting coat. Um, of course, it has to be worn with the, the pants and the boots, uh, but our overall uh, goal is to be in, in totally encapsulated and protected from the heat. All this stuff is flammable. It will burn, but it's, it is fire resistive. So we can, we can take a certain amount of heat with this stuff that the normal person with a cotton t-shirt on couldn't take. Right. So. Well, thank you very much, Eric. And I'm told that all together, you want to step back in here again, Josh, that this equipment would, uh, to outfit a firefighter would run something like $6,500? Yeah, $6,500, $7,000. Like we were talking earlier, it's worth every penny. It's what allows us to do our job and get in and put fires out and rescue people and their pets. Okay, so we've uh, had some nice visits down here, to, talking to some of the uh, uh, staff and looking at some of the equipment. And I, I guess this, uh, this old yellow truck here, Josh, uh, this is soon might be retired, is that right? Uh, this is engine 821, uh, excuse me, 801, and yeah, we're waiting for a new engine. Hopefully it'll be here this summer, and then this will be a standby rig. If something breaks down, this will still be in service. And again, this one, we're trying, if you uh, were to go and go out and buy this with all of the gear, about three-quarters of a million dollars. Yep, nowadays for a new truck. All right. Thanks a lot, Josh and Ron Gugisberg and Eric Eisenlohr for uh, showing us around this morning down at the downtown Fargo uh, Fire Station. I guess there's five of them all around town. Okay, so for photographer Wade Iverson from the Fargo downtown Fire Station and for the Valley Today, I'm Steve Poitras. Thank you very much, Steve. Yeah, 1 o'clock tomorrow, big parade, uh -huh. St. Patty's Day parade. And the weather's okay?